If one stood out among the others, it was Guy Lafleur of the Quebec Rampards. 130 goals in his final junior season. No player has ever scored so many. I think his biggest asset from a coaching standpoint is uh, his knowledge of the game at such a young age. When I was a kid, all I wanted to be is to become a hockey player. Not a star, nor a superman. A two-on-one break. The player over to the mayor, back to the first. He scores! He was the best player on the best team, and it's it's not easy to be a best player. And Guy had a tradition uh, uh, that he had to follow. He was the third in the line of Rocket Richard and Jean Beliveau, and then and then Guy. Didn't play much the first three years, and uh, didn't have any confidence. And uh, I think uh, when Scotty started to play me more, I got more confidence. Later in his career, when his role became a little diminished, uh, he had a little more difficulty with it. He was basically forced into retirement. Uh, and then he, then he played, he didn't play for three seasons, then came back with the New York Rangers. Here it is. Here's the player coming on the ice, and he is getting an immediate standing O. And this is the second one that he's got, and the familiar chant of Gee Gee goes up. Would you have believed it, really? I heard that was, my comeback was a joke, but uh, it didn't influence me at all, you know, because uh, uh, when I retired, you know, I was uh, listening too much to uh, people and some friends that they were telling me, well, you, maybe it's time for you to retire, you know. Good play against the boards by the flower. Now it's Miller is centering pass. There's the first goal! I say he got a goal tonight in his last game at the Forum. Heck, give him the first star anyway. We spent so many Saturday nights watching you. Given the way you feel about the game, do you watch NHL hockey? I watched the playoff, and I really enjoyed watching the, the playoff last year uh, against the Calgary and Tampa. It was a great series, and that's what people really enjoy to watch, and uh, it should be like that all year round. Guy Lafleur, it's been a privilege and a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing the reflections of, of Ron McLean, the host of Hockey Night in Canada, who joins us from Campbell River, British Columbia. Ron, I only had one opportunity to speak to Guy Lafleur and, and was really impressed by that. Y you know him so well. How are you remembering him tonight? Well, Ian, you got to experience uh, the care, uh, the kindness of Guy Lafleur. That's uh, the overriding quality that you always attach to Guy. He's uh, just the sweetest uh, superstar that ever lived. Uh, those eyes were a light. He embraced you with uh, all the, the radiant life that he had grown uh, as a flower under the sun, uh, first uh, Thorso, and then the glittering lights of the most special arena, the Forum in Montreal. And uh, he just grew into, a, as I say, a, a radiant human being that would continually reflect that uh, with each and every soul he met. Wow. Uh, take us back to, to the late 70s, the Montreal Canadiens winning four straight Stanley Cups. He was the superstar on a team of superstars. And, and, and for our younger viewers, describe that era for us. Well, he was the Connor McDavid of his time. Uh, he, he quickly became the fastest man on the planet. Uh, he took over the mantle in 1974, just as Bobby Orr's knees were giving out. He became the greatest player in the league. And one other thing that happened in 74, Ian, he chose to take off his helmet. He was by nature shy. Uh, and he wore a helmet the first three seasons in the NHL, wasn't producing a ton. And at the beginning of the fourth season, he took off his helmet. And honestly, it was like he shed a cocoon and found his wings. Uh, but to describe him, that was it. Speed, pure speed. Uh, he went to the middle. He had a snapshot. He's famous for a couple of slap shot goals against his arch rival, Boston. But uh, it was his speed that was the most intimidating factor. He retired early, uh, you know, maybe a little disgruntled with the Montreal Canadiens in the early 80s, but eventually came back wearing a, a New York Rangers uniform, the Quebec Nordiques as well. Um, what do you think that second career said about Guy and his love of hockey? Well, one of the things is respect, because it was Phil Esposito was GM of the New York Rangers, and there was the arch rival of Montreal in the early 70s who gave Guy the chance. And, you know, that respect, Ian, is another word I would attach to every, you, you've experienced it throughout the telecast. Uh, Wayne Gretzky for six weeks shadowed Guy at the 81 Canada Cup and he learned from him and the Edmonton Oilers learned from Guy. Uh, and I, I'm going to tell the story with Dick Irvin on Hockey Night tomorrow night. 
when the Oilers played the Habs in 81, Sather said, don't you be intimidated the way Boston was, especially by Lafleur." And the game started, and Lafleur went behind Richard Sevigny, the goalie, and right away the two guys on the bench in Edmonton, Dave Semenko and Dave Lomley, started to fire up like a Formula One. And that kind of broke the tension as they tried to cope with that speed, and they got the job done, Edmonton. But they loved him. They adored him in Edmonton, despite the fact he was a rival. And that's right across the country. We have about 45 seconds left, Ron. Uh, he fought uh, cancer with dignity uh, right to the end. Tell us a little bit about that. Right. I interviewed him on July the 5th last year in the final, Ian. It was game four. It was the only game Montreal would win, so he would be their lucky charm. I'll never forget both his eyes, beautiful. He, he just looked so great. Uh, and the roadrunner, Yvonne Cornoyer, his uh, longtime second-in-command, was there that night as well. And uh, he spoke about the fear he was experiencing uh, dealing with cancer, but he also spoke about the joy of taking chemotherapy, being in the ward with the doctors and nurses, technicians, and fellow patients, and how... He likened it to being in a game seven, how every shift was now really important. Um, so it was a, a special memory to see him confront cancer the way he did and to do the good things he did on behalf of it in terms of charity. Um, just, a, you know, as I say, the, this is a flower who, uh, who deserves to be free. He, he gave us so, so much. Larger than life and a life that, that, that ended too soon. Ron, really nice uh, hearing your uh, reminiscences about him. Thank you. Love to the Lafleurs. Thanks again. After the break, Walmart is marking Earth Day by...